friends welcome to my live teaching learning session of vec e144 financial economics today's block is 5 and unit 11 and 12 will be covered in this block and the topic of block is asset pricing here asset pricing under this we will discuss about markowitz model capital pricing model so these are the today's topic under this unit we will discuss about the basic ideas of the markowitz model what is prospect theory what is the meaning of behavioral finance and under this behavioral finance so many biases are included and endowment effect status quo effect types of risk and capital asset rising model which is very important in this financial economics how capital asset prices determined and what risk involved in this uh, different types of assets in which investor can invest their money and minimize the risk and maximize the profit you know that investor always goal want to achieve the maximum uh, profit or maximum return after their investment and each and every financial investment risk is always involved in it and investor willing to reduce the risk and maximize the return after investing their money in any financial asset or in portfolio financial economics tells us about the conditions of different forms of uh, financial markets and investors what type of investors exist in the economy like investors may be risk averter investors may be risk lover and investors may be risk neutral there are three types of nature of the investor if investors are risk lover then they will definitely invest their money in those assets or in those financial asset on which return will be maximum and risk will be minimum if person is risk lover then he can invest his money in any financial asset either risk will minimize or maximize he doesn't care about this and if a person is risk neutral then he will not take any decision regarding risk averter or risk lover in case of this he will remain always in the position of neutral so risk neutral person has no opinion regarding risk more risk and less risk so this asset pricing model or markowitz model and capital asset pricing model in this unit we will discuss about all these things let us start from first topic markowitz model markowitz model is also known as modern portfolio theory or portfolio theory this theory was introduced by harry markowitz with his paper portfolio selection portfolio means different forms of financial assets like financial assets or financial investment refers to those investment in which we can invest our money in paper title documents like shares bonds debentures etc and if we want to choose which financial asset will give us maximum return then markowitz model will definitely help us the markowitz model describe a set of rigorous statistical procedures used to select 
the optimal or ideal portfolio for wealth maximizing in which our wealth is maximum and risk it is generally basic related for risk averter investor so markowitz model is very important model for those investors who are not risk lover who are not risk neutral who are in the position of risk averter and each and every rational person want to reduce the risk and maximize his wealth so markowitz model describes a set of rigorous statistical procedure used to select the optimal or ideal portfolio means different forms of financial asset in which we can choose for wealth maximization and it is basically for risk averter investors the model is describing under the framework of risk return trade off graph it means each and every financial asset involve some risk and investor the main goal of investor is to minimize the risk and maximize the return this is the trade off between risk and return because investor wants to reduce the risk involved in buying the financial asset and investor always want to increase the return or expected that higher return he will earn after investing their money in financial asset so there is a trade off between risk and return and it can be shown with the help of diagram or graph this graph is markowitz portfolio theory graph in this here on y axis expected return is mentioned and on x axis is a uh, capital asset we can take any capital asset in which investor can invest his money here is a upward sloping line which is start from the y axis this line shows risk free rate or it's a best possible cal cal is capital asset line this line shows capital asset line or best possible capital asset line it is also show uh, risk free rate and here this uh, curve which is uh, upward sloping then downward sloping this shows that where this curve is tangent to the risk free rate line or best possible cal line that is called ideal or optimum portfolio where producer where investor can maximize his wealth and minimize the risk so this graph shows that where the optimum level is determined the optimum level is determined at that point where this curve is tangent to this risk free rate line or capital asset line individual asset may be in form of different types of uh, assets like shares bonds debentures etc but the efficient frontier will be that red point this red point indicate agency portfolio here investor will get maximum return and he can maximize his wealth and reduce the risk so expected return will be maximum where this curve is tangent to this best possible capital asset line so this is the graph of Mark Markowitz portfolio theory next is markowitz theory it's uh, related with mean variance analysis sometimes it is known as mean mean is the average variance shows variability 
which is the part of statistical analysis. So mean variance analysis and Markowitz theory both are interrelated with each other. Markowitz is considered the father of modern portfolio theory, mainly because he is the first person who gave a mathematical model for portfolio optimization and diversification. For rational investor, Markowitz uh, tells that uh, every investor should invest their money diversify or in diversification form because we know that financial asset if we invest our money in financial assets then it will be more risky for investor sometimes if we buy shares without knowing any return or without predicting any future of that share market then we can bear losses so we should diversify our investment in different types of capital assets we should not invest our money only in one financial market or in one capital asset because sometimes if we diversify our financial assets in different forms we invest our money then different returns we will get so in this case we can minimize the risk and maximize the profit or wealth so markowitz is considered the father of modern portfolio theory because he is the first person who gave a mathematical model for portfolio optimization and diversification this mpt is the markowitz or modern portfolio theory is a theory of finance that attempts to maximize portfolios expected return for a given amount of risk or minimize the risk for a given level of expected return. Markowitz theory advises investors to invest in multiple securities rather than pulling all eggs in one basket because if basket fall or fell down then all eggs will be destroyed same as if we invest our whole amount of money then if any risk or too much risk involved in that we can bear we have to bear losses so Markowitz theory advise investors to invest in multiple securities, not in single security. Person should invest their money in multiple securities rather than pulling all eggs in one. Portfolio return, how we can estimate this portfolio return? rate of return and P is portfolio. So here WI is the weight of stock or weight of uh, stock market or share market. R is expected return and this sigma is standard deviation and P is correlation. So portfolio return can be estimated by using this formula E in bracket RP, RP is the uh, return of portfolio and is equals to summation of M, I is equals to 0, W into R. Here W is the weight of stock and R is the return. And if we want to calculate portfolio variance, then its formula is standard deviation or portfolio standard deviation whole square is equals to summation n i is equals to 0 w i into w j standard deviation i into standard deviation j into p i j. 
here p i j is equals to 1 and i is equals to j and p is correlation standard deviation is sigma we can denote by this and r is the return and w is the weight of stock so these are the formulas of portfolio return and the calculation of portfolio variance because Markowitz theory is based on mean variance theory. So in this we can calculate portfolio return and portfolio variance by using these formulas. Next is assumptions of Markowitz portfolio theory. Markowitz theory assumed so many assumptions like investors, first assumption is investors consider each investment alternative as being presented by a probability distribution of expected returns over some holding period. First assumption is that investor consider each investment either it may be in share market either it may be in bonds or in debentures so investor consider each investment alternatives as being presented by a probability distribution probability distribution tells us that um, we can expect that it will uh, exist or it will occur in future or expected return over some holding time period it may be one year, two year, or maybe five year. Second assumption is investors minimize one period expected utility and their utility curves demonstrate diminishing marginal utility of wealth, which is generally concave to the origin. And third assumption is investor estimate the risk of the portfolio on the basis of the variability of expected return. It means investors should estimate the risk of the portfolio or the risk of the financial asset in which he wants to invest his money. So he should estimate the risk which involved in the portfolio investment on the basis of the variability of expected return then he should invest his money in financial asset so these are the assumptions of markowitz portfolio theory next is modern portfolio theory which is also presented by harry markowitz because we can say that markowitz theory or modern portfolio theory both are the same thing because uh, these uh, theory can be known by different names but the main father of these theory is Harry Markowitz which showed investors how to diversify their portfolio based on several assumptions. First assumption is investors are rational decision makers investors should be rational decision maker then he can invest uh, ideally or optimally in that financial asset in which he will earn maximum return and he will reduce the risk involved in that asset and uh, markowitz assumed that investors are risk averter not risk lover or not risk neutral Third assumption is investors' preferences are based on a portfolio's expected return and risk. We know that there is a trade-off between risk and expected return, which can be measured by variance or standard deviation. And this theory is known as efficient portfolio introduce the notion of an efficient portfolio if investor follow these assumptions and by adopting these assumptions and then he invest his money 
in financial asset, then definitely the return which he will earn from that investment, it will be known as efficient portfolio or optimal portfolio. Modern portfolio theory, under this, we can calculate expected return. In expected return, uh, the formula of uh, this expected return is E, RP is expected return from portfolio sigma WI E into E in bracket RI. Or in simple form, we can write WI into RI. W is wealth and R is the rate of return on asset. And W is the weighting of compounds, component asset. Next is portfolio return variance. It can be estimated by using this standard deviation square. P is portfolio and simple P is a correlation. If we write PIJ, it's the correlation coefficient between the return asset, return on asset I and J. So we can use these formulas. Next is portfolio return volatility. This formula is standard deviation P. It means portfolio standard deviation is equals to under root uh, sigma uh, standard deviation square P is portfolio. Next is for asset two type of second type of asset portfolio. Portfolio return can be estimated by using this if there are two types of asset in which investor is investing his money then this expected return formula will be E in bracket RP is equals to WA E in bracket RA plus WB it means weighted of component asset 1 is WA and weighted of component asset 2 is WB and expected return from asset A is RA and expected return from asset B is RB then we can write this formula in this form W A E R A plus W B E R B is equals to W A E R A plus 1 minus W A E R B. Here we use probability distribution. P is the probability chance of occurrence and 1 minus P is the chance of non-occurrence of the probability. And portfolio variance can be estimated by using this formula. Standard deviation square P is equals to W square A, standard deviation square A plus W square B, standard deviation square B plus 2 WA, WB, standard deviation A, standard deviation B into here P, P is correlation, coefficient of correlation into AB because coefficient of correlation shows the relationship between two variables. Here, two assets we are taking like A and B. So we can use this A, P, A, B is the coefficient of correlation between the two assets A and B. And for a third asset portfolio, portfolio return, we can use this. We can expand this formula if we have taking three types of assets like A, B, C, then W, A, E, R, A, plus W, B, E, R, B, plus W, C, E, R, C. If we are taking four types of assets, then this formula will be expanded and extend we can this W, A, W, B, W, C, W, D. Same as R, A, R, B, R, C, and R, D. And E is the expected return. And same as we can uh, expand this formula in case of portfolio variance if we are taking three assets. So this is the simple formula of calculation of uh, expected return and variance in different types of assets. Next is prospect theory. This prospect theory was introduced by Kahneman and Tversky in 1979, normative decision analysis theory assumes that outcomes of decision or prospects are described in terms of total 
that in considered in terms of gains losses or neutral outcomes a decision maker consider prospects using a function that values all the prospects relative to a reference point like phase 1 is framing the decision problem and phase 2 is evaluating the prospect and prospect tells us the outcomes of decisions so prospect theory generally tells us about the outcomes of decision and these decisions are based on normative or idealistic decisions the prospect theory can be explained with the help of this graph here individual make decision based on the potential losses or gains if individual person is gaining profit it means his decision will be called rational decision and if he is bearing losses psychologically we can say that the pain of losing or losing is psychologically twice as powerful as the pleasure of gaining it means if we lose anything then we take more stress rather than gaining or pleasure of gaining so the prospect theory generally tells us about the decision which decision is optimal for the investor and what potential gain or losses involved while taking optimal or best decision in investing money in financial asset next is there are different types of bias are included in asset pricing model first is present bias bias is the discrimination or if we are discriminating anything that is called bias present bias is the tendency to rather settle for a smaller present reward than to wait for a larger future reward in a trade off situation it describes the trends of overvaluing immediate rewards while putting less worth in long term consequences sometimes people mainly prefer present time period rather than future time period so they want to invest their money in that capital asset in which present return is more and they don't expect what will they earn in future in sometimes future return will be more than the present return and in some financial asset present return is more than the future return so some people mainly predict about future and they give more preference to future time period rather than present time period but others give more preference to present time period rather than future time period because they know that future is uncertain any mishappening can be happen in future but at present which is in their hand they want to earn maximum profit at present they don't bother about what they will earn in future that is called present bias which describe the trend of overvaluing immediate reward while putting less worth in long term consequences next is diversification bias time inconsistency 
also occurs when our present self fails to predict accurately the preferences of our future self. So, point illustrated well by diversification bias. Diversification bias means when shopping for multiple future consumption, diversification means different things and we can diversify our bias. It means time inconsistency also occurs when our present self fails to predict accurately or surely the preferences of the future that is the point of diversification bias. Next is endowment effect. Endowment effect shows that the price you expect to get for your mobile is for example 8000 and the price every other guy want to pay is 5000 that is called endowment effect. Endowment is uh, the meaning of like factor and uh, factor effect shows that how much amount everybody wants to pay that is 5000. It means this less amount which the price every other guy wants to pay is known as endowment effect. Because our expectation uh, may be higher, may be lower, it doesn't matter. But all other people who expect or think about the any commodity or any particular asset, the price of that asset, if they want to pay for that thing is only 5,000 or less amount, that will be called endowment effect. Next is, what is the status quo bias? The status quo bias describes our preferences for the current state of affairs resulting in resistance to change. It means when I am comfortable with existing belief or past decisions, then we will not interested to change our beliefs. It means we are uh, resistance to change, we are refusing to change ourselves. So status quo bias generally show the position that our preferences for the current state affairs resulting in resistance to change. If a person is comfortable with existing belief or past decision, then he will not feel comfortable in future beliefs or at present beliefs. That is called status quo bias. These all things are related with psychological or mentality of the investor. Next is some cost fallacy. First of all, you know about what is sunk cost. Sunk cost is that cost which can't be recoverable. The cost which is sunk or non-recoverable cost. And fallacy is the illusion or fallacy is the situation in which uh, we illuse or we are in case of uh, sometimes uh, we are in position of uh, like we don't know what to do and not to do. So that is the situation of fallacy. So some cost fallacy makes us continue a venture or behavior and pursue an inferior alternative simply because we have invested resources previously. A change in direction would improve this project, but I have already spent 30 hours doing it this way, so let us just keep going. Sometimes we take decision on that belief if we spend most of the time in that project 
in which we are not getting more, but we have spent a lot of time on that project. So we don't want to change ourselves and we want to uh, keep on that project, either it is giving us reward or not. So some cost fallacy makes us continue a venture or behavior and pursue an inferior alternative because we have invested resources previously. And it generally happens in most of the cases. If we have denoted or devoted our most of the time in one thing, then we don't want to change ourselves and we don't want to move in other situation. That is called sunk cost fallacy, in which a change in direction would improve this project, but we don't want to change myself, mind, we don't want to change that project because we have already spent most of the time in doing that project. So we think that let us just keep going, either it will give us profit or not. So that is called sunk cost fallacy. Next is points to consider while choosing passive versus active investing. Category of funds in which you are investing in. First of all, we have to choose what type of category we are taking uh, while doing the decision of investment and uh, past performance. We should think about the past performance of that funds and cost which involved in investment and control over the investment portfolio, transparency in investment and ability to diversify. So these are the six points we have to consider while choosing passive versus active investing. And these six points are category of funds when we are investing in capital asset, uh, past performance, we should think about that past performance of the capital asset and what cost involved in investment. If cost is higher, then investment should be lower. And if cost is lower, then investment should be higher. And control over the investment portfolio, either we can control over that investment portfolio or not. If investment portfolio control is in our hand, then we should invest. If it is out of control, then we should uh, not invest our money in that capital asset. And transparency should also present in uh, financial assets. And uh, we should be able to diversify our investment in different portfolios so that we can minimize the risk and maximize the expected return. So these are the different points to consider by choosing passive versus active investing. Now, what is the meaning of passive investment and what is the meaning of active investment? Now we will explain in detail. Active investment involves a more hands on approach to buying and selling stocks with the goals of beating the stock market average return it requires analysis and expertise. If a person uh, deeply analyze all these things and take the decisions or take the advices from the expertise, that will be called active investment. So active investing involve a more hands on approach while buying and selling stocks with the goal of the beating the stock market average return. But it requires analysis and expertise. And the passive investing involves less buying and selling and is considered it's a long-term strategy. This type of investing requires a buy and hold mentality. 
के कोई वायस अथॉरिटीज एंड होल्ड इट नॉट इन्वॉल्व टू मच एनालिसिस एंड टू मच रैशनल डिसीजन दैट इज कॉल्ड पैसिव इन्वेस्टिंग सो दिस टाइप ऑफ इन्वेस्टिंग रिक्वायर्स अ बाय एंड होल्ड मैंटेलिटी it involves less buying and selling and is considered it's a long term strategy next is capital market like this is uh, in short form we can say that c m l c is capital m is market l is line this capital market line is a theoretical concept that represent all the portfolios that optimally combine the risk free rate of return which is upward sloping line and the market portfolio of risky assets so this capital market line is a upward sloping line which start from the y axis if the rate of return is same the line will be same upward sloping will not change but if different rates are applying then this line will be uh, not uh, upward directly upward sloping it may be changed sometimes so capital market line is uh, that line which shows all the portfolio that optimally combine the risk free rate of return and the market portfolio of risky assets we can show this capital market line with this uh, graph here expected return is mentioned or written on y axis and on x axis standard deviation is written this rf is expected return or risk free return line we start from the y axis and it's a upward sloping line and here yellow line is capital market line and the curve which is concave shape curve that is efficient frontier it's generally in difference look like a in difference curve which is downward sloping curve from left to right which shows different possible combinations and where this capital market line or this curve which is known as efficient frontier is tangent that is point m that is the efficient outcome or optimal or rational decision taken by the investor so where this efficient frontier curve is tangent to this capital market line her expected return will be maximum and risk will be minimum next is capital uh, capital market line may be differ because if different lending and borrowing rates are applicable in the market if different lending and borrowing rates exist in the market then this line will not be directly upward sloping it may be Uh, kinked shape or in the beginning it is increasing and after that it is uh, falling here simple plain line black line is showing lending portfolio and the dotted line is showing borrowing portfolio when the rates are different for borrowers and lenders if different rates are followed by different person then this line will be kinked at point m next is financial leverage financial leverage is an investment strategy of using borrowed money specifically the use of various financial instruments or borrowed capital to increase the potential return of an investment so financial leverage leverage is financial is finance and leverage is an investment strategy of using borrowed money because we borrowed money from lenders lenders who borrowed their money who give their money who lend their money for borrowers specifically for the use of financial instruments or borrowed capital in which we want to increase the potential return of an investment that is called financial leverage next is types of risk there are so many types of risk 
involved in financial economics and in financial assets. When we are taking about the decision regarding financial asset, which type of asset we should invest our money for getting more return and reducing less risk, we know that each and every capital asset involve risk. Here types of risk are generally classified into two broad categories. One is systematic risk and second is unsystematic risk. Systematic risk is generally known as uncontrollable, which is uncontrollable by an organization. Which, because the, this type of risk systematically it involves, it occurs, that why, that's why it is uncontrollable by an organization. And it is macro in nature, it means it is not applicable in case of any individual capital asset. It uh, involved in all capital assets in which investor want to invest. But unsystematic risk is different from uh, systematic risk. And uh, unsystematic risk is controllable by an organization. And it is generally exist in micro in nature. It means this type of risk involved in individual asset, not at uh, all assets. But systematic risk involves all as assets. That's why it is known as macro in nature. So these are the two main broad categories of systematic risk and uh, unsystematic risk. These are included in types of risk. Next is types of risk can be explained in this form also systematic risk have so many forms like business risk financial risk liquidity risk country risk exchange rate and unsystematic risk are generally controllable by organization and it uh, exists at micro level or micro in nature next is types of risk we can explain with the help of this form, like systematic risk are like market risk, interest risk, purchasing power risk, all types of risk involved in systematic risk. And unsystematic risk, we include business risk, like internal risk, external risk, and financial risk, like credit risk, currency risk, country risk, and liquidity risk. So these are the different types of risk which involve in capital asset market. Now next topic is capital asset pricing model. Capital asset pricing model is a framework for determining the equilibrium expected return for risky asset. How we can determine capital asset price? So capital asset pricing model describe the framework of determination of the or determining the equilibrium expected return from risky assets. It shows the relationship between expected return and systematic risk, which we know that that is uncontrollable by an organization and it uh, always exists at macro level of individual assets or securities portfolio. William F. Sharp developed this model CAPM like capital mm -hmm. asset pricing model. He emphasized that risk factor in portfolio theory is a combination of true risk, true risk are systematic and unsystematic risk. These are the two main broad categories of risk which involved in capital asset market. So William F. Sharp developed this model and he emphasized that risk factor in portfolio theory is a combination of two risks, systematic and unsystematic risk. 
Next is capital asset pricing model. This model also assumes some assumptions like investors are price takers and have homogeneous expectations. This model assumes that all investors are price takers, they are not price maker and have homogeneous or same expectations. One period model, this model is based on one period and this model assume that presence of a riskless assets because investor always reduce the risk and maximize his wealth. And investors are generally we assume that risk averter, not risk lover or not risk neutral. No taxes, transaction cost, regulations or short selling restrictions we assume that they are perfect market applicable in this CAPM model. It means there is no government interference or no interference or restrictions by the government imposed in this capital asset pricing model. Only perfect competition market is that market where government does not play any role or not interfere in market activities. So no taxes, no transaction cost, no regulations or short selling restrictions should be present while we explain or we, while we are taking this capital asset pricing model. Next is returns are normally distributed or investors utility is a quadratic function in return. Here we are assuming that normal distribution or probability distribution is normal in which mean, median and mode all are equal. There is no uh, unsymmetry or asymmetrical uh, distribution exists in the economy. That's why returns are normally distributed or investors utility is a quadratic function in return. These are the assumptions of capital asset pricing model. Next is, this is the graph of capital asset pricing model. Here uh, on x-axis risk is return and on y-axis return is return. As well as we take more risk, more return we will get. So if risk premium lies in between of 3% to 9%, that is the shaded area or this blue portion where this arrow indicates that here risk premium is in between of 3% to 9%. Here risk free, this uh, upper sloping line, which is uh, start from the y axis, that is the risk free rate risk free rate is normally taken as the yield on a long term government bond in the country where the project or company is based. The beta of the market is 1 and the risk premium lies in between of 3% to 9% that is uh, the determination of capital asset pricing model and we can explain with the help of this graph. Next is Capital asset pricing model, this model has so many advantages and disadvantages also. What are the advantages of this model? The advantages of this models are, number one is it's very easy to use. Second is it consider systematic risk. Third is, is uh, it is, uh, establishes theoretical relationship between risk and return. And uh, it's a vital in WCC calculation it means we can estimate uh, capital asset price with the help of this uh, model and its superior discount rate in investment appraisal. Uh, these are the advantages of this uh, capital asset pricing model. Now, what are the disadvantages of this model? The disadvantages of this uh, model is because this, uh, as a, this is based on some assumption this capital asset pricing model is based on perfect market situation assumption, which is unrealistic 
That's why we can say that this uh, capital asset pricing model uh, is assumed risk-free rate, which is unrealistic. And substitute of risk-free rate yield on government of India bonds keeps fluctuating. We can't assume that it remains always constant and betas do not remain stable. Like here we assume that beta is equal to one, but it uh, not always, beta always not remains stable or constant uh, over time because at present we are living in dynamic economy. Uh, nothing is static in this world. Everything is changing. Everything is uh, uh, moving uh, or everything is uh, in a dynamic form or in a changing uh, situation. That's why beta do not remain stable or equals to one every time. Rate of return is based only on one factor that is systematic risk. That assumption is also not true because there are two broad categories of risk. One is systematic and other is non-systematic. Uh, so rate of return is based on this one factor systematic risk that is also the disadvantage of this theory. It focuses only on multiple period, different times of period we can take, but it is taking only single period time horizon. That's why these are the disadvantages of this capital asset pricing model. Next is limitations of CAPM. What are the limitations of capital asset pricing model? There are so many uh, limitations or uh, drawbacks of this theory because uh, it is based on unrealistic assumptions. That's why we can criticize this model. And it is difficult to test the strength of capital asset pricing model. That's why this point is also tells us about the risk limitations of this model. And next is beta do not remain stable over time. Uh, in the diagram of this capital asset pricing model, we take that beta is equal to one, but beta uh, will not remain always constant because uh, nothing is static in this world. Everything is changing or moving forward. That's why beta do not remain stable over time. These are the limitations of this capital asset pricing model. Next is summary and conclusion. Now in today's session, we have discussed about Markowitz model or modern portfolio theory because portfolio tells us different forms of assets in which we can diversify our investment and we can rationally take decision uh, about that investment in which we can minimize the risk and maximize the return. So our investor, investor should know about all these things. That's why all these things are included in financial economics. Financial economics play a very important role in economy and for investors and in business organizations and in each and every field of the economic activities because it tells us that uh, lender should lend their money in those financial institutions where he will get maximum return and borrower should take money or borrow the money from those financial institution where he will pay less and get more profit and more reward. So this CAPM is a theory that provides a relationship between expected return and an asset risk. It is based on investors being well diversified and choosing non-dominated portfolios that consist of combination of F, F is risk-free securities and F. While the CAPM is useful for considering the risk return trade-off and it is still used by many practitioners, it is but one of many theories relating to risk, return on risk, 
and other factors, so it should not be regarded as a universal truth. So this CAP model is not applicable universally because it has so many drawbacks and limitations. That's why while using and we should follow this theory in case of expected return and an asset risk. Now this block is completed. In next session, we will discuss about next block 6 and unit 13 and 14 will be covered in that session. Thank you.